right, we played some Quicksilver uh, Messenger Service. John Chipoling is on the phone with us from uh, Portland, Oregon. John, you there? How are you tonight? Oh, pretty good. You guys are uh, you guys are gigging up there, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Okay. You know, here we are, still doing it 20 years later, whatever. Yeah, you do it good. John's in about four different bands. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah give us a trace your career for us, John, because you have uh, you played with a lot of people. Yeah, I have. Let me see. Well, after Quicksilver, I went on into Copperhead, and then um, Nikki uh, and Nikki Hopkins turned me on to sessions. I did about four years of sessions. And then I went from that into, uh, went over to England and did an album group called Man. Started uh, working over there in the continent. Then um, I worked with a local band, which I still work with, as a matter of fact, but we're working at the end of the month called Terry the Pirates. And uh, I've been here with the Dinosaurs since 1982. And um, Cavs Band Zero. And we had an album out. We had a band called Free Life before that. And the Rocky Sullivan Band for a while. Hey, give me the dynamics of these bands at that time, John. Was the, I mean, it was more than commercial success motivating you guys. I mean, it was uh, there was well, a commercial success never really motivated us. I mean, we, the reason we started playing, we started playing rock and roll because it was uncool. Everybody was still playing folk music, and we did it just to be obnoxious in a place. <laughs> and uh, you know, we boogie on down, so to speak. And uh, it was just our little way of like being irritating. You know, we certainly weren't trying to be successful. I mean, you gotta remember, in 64, when rock and roll was banned, was out, you couldn't play rock and roll publicly because, you know, before birth control, rock and roll was real violent. You know, everybody was like, rip up seats and do all kinds of stuff like that. <laughs> and so all the dances were pretty much uh, uh, forbidden in San Francisco. That's why the first few, the, you know, the, the uh, acid tests, and, you know, and then the, the concerts and stuff like that, which later, of course, became dance concerts and stuff. But at the beginning, they were all, uh, thinly disguised as something other than rock and roll because rock and roll was considered, um, you know, troublesome. Did, did, uh and, and that was a, uh, uh, we're just talking about the fact that when the first electric guitar riff was heard, was it on, I mean, I mean, so many people made the electric guitar riffs famous, Hendrix, uh, and, uh, but, but Dylan used an electric guitar instead of that folk guitar. And yeah, he that, was the first one to, uh, to do that, exactly. Yeah, that was, that was about the same era. You know? yeah. We've got to, we're gonna, uh, John, I want to thank you for calling tonight. We're going to take everybody out here. I know you can't hear it there, but some more quick uh, silver messenger service. And uh, best of luck to you. Stay in touch. Bye, John. So long, John. Thanks. Bye. Right, so long. Here's some quick silver messenger service, and we will return. Love to hear from you. 478 9544. 60s Radio Live. We're here at 4 a.m.